Hello, I'm JP Choquette, and I'm chatting with you today from Vermont, a land flowing with books and maple syrup. And I have been kind of quiet lately uh, here on my YouTube channel, and that was not maybe planned, but it was intentional. Um, I've just been in kind of a reading slump for a while, and uh, in a slump in general, just feeling kind of stretched thin and overwhelmed and I really um, do my best to make sure that things kind of stay mellow and peaceful and I work really hard to create kind of an environment of um, just less so less stuff and less busyness and less um, commitments and is really conscious but sometimes even with our very best intentions um, you know things just happen life happens situations happen um, busyness happens and so I've just been in this kind of busy season and that partnered with the fact that I haven't been doing a lot of fiction reading um, because, well, for reasons I'll get into shortly, I just, um, I didn't want to post if I didn't have anything to say. <laughs> That's basically what it comes down to. And yeah, I've been just really struggling to find a book that resonates with me lately. I feel like I read a lot of um, supernatural suspense this year. I did a whole um, jag where all I wanted to read was kind of survival suspense novels and that was really fun. Um, and then I read some domestic kind of thrillers and I don't know, it all started to feel a little weighty and a little almost depressing. <laughs> like, I love suspense and thrillers and mysteries because of the puzzle and because of the way that um, you really, they draw me into the story, right? And if you're also a reader of those kind of genres, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. And it feels so good to just have those 10 or 15 minutes. Um, for me, it's after my lunch break where I can just go into the story and completely check out and forget about everything else. And I still love that. I still appreciate that. I'm, I'm a lifelong reader, so I'm definitely um, not giving up my fiction reading for sure. But sometimes, and I don't know if you feel this way too, sometimes it feels a little much. <laughs> like I don't want to hear about murder or bad things um, happening. And so I've taken kind of a break from... Uh, fiction reading in general and um, just yeah I just felt like I was really in a slump and couldn't find something that really sparked my interest or that I could read more than a couple chapters of I made it through like a few chapters of various books and then just kind of put them aside or pass them on because I'm like no I'm not <laughs> I'm not feeling it so with that being said I um, I also thought that maybe part of the problem was just this feeling of overwhelm that I was talking about. It's been very busy at work and um, just with the holiday preparation and all those kind of things, um, you know, it gets hectic sometimes. And so sometimes what I like to do during those times of um, hecticness is to pare down my physical space. So you might notice that my shelves here are um, a lot less full than they have been in the past and that's that was really intentional. I went through um, last week and the week before and I collected about three grocery bag, like the paper grocery bag sized um, bags of books which I donated and a lot of it was fiction. A lot of it was novels that I had picked up here and there. Um, you've seen some of them, the book hauls I've done. And a lot of them were even previous um, to this year. So books that I've just been holding on to for a while, thinking it sounded interesting. I'm going to get to that someday. But at, at certain times, um, and I don't know if 
other people feel this way, but for me, at certain times, having the books around me, um, especially if they're books I'm not super excited about reading, I just picked them up because they looked kind of sort of interesting, um, they can start to feel like a weight, like they're pressing down on me, like I have this pressure that, um, you know, I need to read these books, and every time I walk past my shelves thinking like, oh my gosh, that's, you know, there's so many books there I haven't read yet. Um, so sometimes it just helps to go through and clear out and I love doing this before the holidays if possible. Uh, sometimes I wait and do it in January, but if I can do it pre-Christmas, um, that's the holiday that we celebrate, and if I can tackle it before then, even better because then it frees up space and energy and um, even mental, uh, mental space for me for the holiday season, which tends to be extra busy. So you'll see that a lot of my books are missing and I hope they find wonderful homes elsewhere with happy readers. Um, this is pretty much my fiction section now. So, so it's been, um, it's been uh, weeded way down, but I do expect to get at least a couple books for Christmas. Um, and if I don't receive them as gifts, that's totally fine and I probably will purchase a couple more um, to treat myself either for Christmas or my birthday. But today I wanted to tell you about one book that I did start reading just a couple days ago and I actually found it while I was clearing out all the all the books that I donated and uh, you know I read the inside flap and then I read the first page and I was like oh yeah I gotta keep this one. So it, it is, um, I think it would fall under the thriller category, but not um, super gruesome or gory. You know, I don't tend to like that. Um, and so I don't think, and it's also not the kind of thriller where you're like sick to your stomach or like so worried about the character, you know, that something terrible is going to happen to them. This is, so far at least, this is uh, more of a, um, I would call it like a softer thriller. It's more, um, it's excellent writing, but it's not um, heart pounding, you know, anxiety ridden kind of um, thriller, if that makes sense. So this is also my first by this author, which is very exciting to me because I see that she has quite a lot of books. She's actually a best-selling author. So I'm not sure how I missed reading her books before. Um, but the author's name is Joy Fielding, and this book is called Whispers and Lies. And um, she has a lot, well, I don't know when this one was actually published. I should have checked before I started this. It looks like this one came out in 2002. And at the printing for this particular novel, I believe she had like 10. I think there's like 10 other novels and so from 2002 to today that's like a bunch of years where I bet she's written a lot more so I'm really looking forward to reading more of hers. This particular book is about um, Terry Painter. She's a nurse who lives this very quiet, um, mellow, kind of simple life and her mother, uh, her elderly mother she was caring for and then the mother passed away and so Terry is I think still sort of trying to figure out like what's next for her in life, what's next for her in this chapter. She's unmarried, she's uh, no children, so her mom was basically um, her family, the, the family that she had left. And so as Terry um, kind of finds out about that next chapter in her life, she um, becomes friends with her new tenant, this girl named Allison. And I think there's like a 12 or 15 year difference between the two characters. And Allison is kind of everything Terry's not. She's very impetuous. She's very um, bright and sunny and does everything kind of on a whim and uh, just very kind of wild compared to Terry. And so there's kind of been some little, uh, little twists and kind of eyebrow raising incidents that have happened so far between Allison and Terry. And you're wondering like, is this Allison person all that she claims to be or is something more sinister going on here in the background? 
So I'm very much enjoying this. Um, I'd love to hear if you've read this particular novel or anything else by this author, Joy Fielding. Please let me know. And um, also, I would just love to hear from you about your reading slumps, if you ever have them, um, kind of what your tactics are for pulling yourself out of them, if you just kind of let it run its course, or if you have anything in particular that you do. So that's it for me this time. I will see you again in the more near future. And thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.